Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube. Now, some of you may have noticed I've taken a little break and that's because I got married and I gave myself a little break during the wedding. Now, obviously the first question that everyone asks me is, I wanna see the cake. What did the cake look like? How was the cake? Show me, show me. But I hate to disappoint. I didn't actually have a wedding cake. I know, I know that's a huge thing, especially for a cake maker, but there were a few reasons. Firstly, I didn't actually want the stress of making a cake before my wedding. If you've made a wedding cake yourself or you've seen tutorials on it, you'll know it takes a lot of work and a lot of time in the kitchen. And secondly, where I got married was actually a kosher venue. And because of the kush root rules, I couldn't have a dairy cake. And if you know me, I love my butter. So I didn't have a wedding cake. However, it is coming up to mine and Tal's, my husband's, one month anniversary and we have to have a cake of some sort. So I thought to do a mini tiered wedding cake, which is what this tutorial is all about. So we're going mini. So what I've actually got here is I made half of my normal six inch sponge cake recipe and divided it into a four inch tin and four large cupcakes. And from this, I'm gonna create a mini tiered cake. So I'm gonna start with the four inch cake. And as usual, I'm going to trim off this, this slightly domed top by placing my knife and rotating the cake just above where it starts to dome and then slowly cutting inwards to remove the top. Take that off. And now I'm gonna cut this in half. So find halfway with the knife and do the exact same motion and cut it in half. And now I've gone all the way around, I can saw with my knife until it goes all the way through the cake. Perfect. So because it's mini, I'm not gonna do my normal four layers of cake, I'm going to keep it as two. And now for the cupcakes. Now the reason why I made cupcakes is because I didn't have any tins smaller than my four inch tin. But what I'm going to do is unwrap each cupcake and this is gonna act as one layer of cake. So you can see they're just a little bit bigger than the cake layers. And this is gonna be the second tier. So just to start, I'm actually going to use one of these cake layers as a guide and I can cut it to the same height using the same technique by twisting the cupcake and then cut all the way through. So I've got two smaller layers. They are slightly tapered but I'm not worried about that because anything can be hidden with buttercream. And now for the very top tier of the cake. So I'm also going to be using these cupcakes but I'm going to cut a little bit away from them. I'm going to start off in the same way, taking them out of the case and using the cake to guide how tall they should be. And obviously these are the same size as the other two I just did. So I'm actually going to cut them out using a small circle cutter. So there's a difference between the top tier and the middle tier. So I'm just gonna simply push the cutter through the cupcake. Hopefully it'll come out the other side. And there's a little mini tier of cake. I'm gonna do the same thing here. So these are my three tiers of cake ready to be filled. So of course, if you have any cake scraps, then feel free to either just eat them, they're delicious, or save them, turn them into crumbs and make cake truffles or cake pops. I'm just gonna leave them to the side and start filling up my cake. So I've got the four inch, and then I've got the middle tier and the very top. And to help me build up this cake because it's so small, I'm actually going to be using a wooden skewer to keep it in place. And of course, like any cake, I will also need my turntable with a cake board and a palette knife. And because it's a mini cake, it's a perfect excuse to use my mini scrapers. And don't worry, I've got the link to this in the description box of the video. So now it's time to fill up my mini cake. And for this, I'm of course using my Swiss meringue buttercream that I've already flavored with vanilla. And if you haven't already, then check out my tutorial and recipe on how to make the best buttercream, which is my Swiss meringue buttercream. And as always, I need a little bit of buttercream on my cake board in order for the cake to stick. So I'm just going to use a piping bag and squeeze on a nice amount onto the board. And then I'm gonna get my first piece of sponge and place it on top of the buttercream. Squeeze it down so it's nice and secure. And 
What I'm gonna do is create a slight dam with the buttercream because I wanna go in with a jammy filling. Get my jam and fill in the middle. Make sure it's spread out evenly and top off with some more buttercream. And then I'm gonna flatten out with my palette knife as always, tilting the palette knife slightly while turning the turntable until the buttercream flattens out. And of course, it's encasing all that jammy filling inside. Then a second piece of cake sits on top. Make sure it's nice and level. And now I'm actually going to do a brief crumb coat with just this single tier, but then I'm going to continue building up the cake from this without doing it all separately like I usually would for a tiered cake, purely because it's such a small cake, it's not very heavy and I can just do it all in one. So what I'm gonna do is pipe a little bit of buttercream onto the surface and around the sides and scrape it to my crumb coat stage. So a small amount on the top, around the very bottom where it meets the cake board, in between, and that should be enough for the crumb coat. And then with my palette knife, spread it out thinly on top with that same circular motion as before to get that nice, flat, even surface. Moving the buttercream around the sides of the cake, covering as much sponge as possible. And now I want to scrape this crumb coat clean and this is where I'm gonna use my mini scrapers, which I'm so excited to use, they are adorable. Now you can get two versions. One is acrylic, which is a lot stronger, so I'm gonna use it for this bit. And the metal ones are slightly more flexible, which helps on that second layer of buttercream. So like I said, I'm gonna start with the acrylic and go around to make these sides nice and smooth. So placing the scraper vertically at about 45 degrees towards the cake, making sure it's nice and straight, and moving around that buttercream until the sides are smooth and as straight as possible. And now it's time to clean off those top corners. So I'm just gonna make sure my palette knife is nice and clean and then using the edge of my palette knife like normal. So from the outside, swiping into the middle, off and then cleaning off on the scraper. And then any crummy buttercream could go into a separate bowl. So the first tier is done and I'm not too fussed about it being perfect or not because I'm going straight away with that second tier and maybe going around the top again anyway. But for the second tier, even though I didn't originally mind the tapered edges, I think I actually do want to cut them. So I found a cookie cutter the exact same size as the bottom of a cupcake, so I might as well make it all the same size anyway. So I'm just going to push the cutter down and it's just going to remove a part of that cupcake. Hopefully, this was now nice and straight. So now I can go directly on with this second tier of cake. Even though there is already buttercream, I don't think it's enough to keep this in place. So I will just dot on a little bit more. And this can go on top. Make sure it is as in line as possible. Now I put jam on the one underneath because that's Tal's favorite flavor, but this tier, I'm gonna go with a little bit of lotus, which is my favorite flavor. So I'm going to start off with the ring of buttercream and then go in with some lotus spread. Tiny little ring for the tiny tier. Some lotus. And then top it up with some more buttercream. Seal that inside. And then go on with the other piece of cake. I can already tell how wobbly this cake is going to be because it is so small. So I'm going to get that wooden skewer and put it in place already. And again, this is just gonna help me keep the cake centered and not slide around everywhere. So I'm gonna place the skewer in. It doesn't even need to be central because it will come out anyway. Now that cake's not going anywhere. So now I'm going to crumb coat this, just like I did with the tier below, with some buttercream. A little bit around the bottom squiggle around the middle and a little bit on the top too and do as much as I can with my palette knife with that skewer there. As long as it's getting flat against the cake then it's fine. Around the sides and then again with the scraper and it's really tidying up that crumb coat and then the corners coming from the outside into the middle. So now it's time for the top tier but I can't really work out exactly where the center is so I'm going to take out the skewer carefully, place on the top tier, a little bit of buttercream, there's no room for filling in this one, and then the next piece of cake, squeeze it a little bit, 
And then I'm gonna go back in with the skewer just to re-secure it. So you can obviously see that the size difference between the middle and the top tier is much smaller than the middle and the bottom tier. Uh, that's because I didn't want that top tier to be really small because it's already difficult enough. But once the second layer of buttercream and all the piped details that I'm going to be decorating this cake with are on, I don't think it's going to be so much of a problem. If anything, I can just focus more details down here. It is a mini cake after all. So I'm just going to finish off the crumb coat for this top tier and then put the whole thing ready to chill. So again, a small amount of buttercream around this tier and a bit on top. And then carefully move the buttercream around the cake. So I'm actually gonna hold the skewer in place because that's gonna help the cake not move around. And then the top. And then go with the scraper one more time. And again, it doesn't need to be perfect. The whole idea of a crumb coat is just to secure all those crumbs inside. I'm just going to use the scraper to neaten up any other edges around the rest of the cake. And then the very top, tiny bits of buttercream. Okay, that was the hardest crumb coat I've ever done. So maybe I should have separated the tiers, but to be honest, they're so small and they don't even need support in between because they're so light but I've got it straight, the crumb coat is done, we've got nice sharp corners. Now I'm gonna put this whole cake with the skewer in the freezer for it to completely set. So then when I go on with a second coating of buttercream, I could just do it all in one and there'll be no crumbs at all. So 15 minutes in the freezer should do it. Okay, so the cake and buttercream is now completely solid, having been set in the freezer. So now I'm gonna go ahead and apply a second coating of buttercream to the whole cake at one time. So I've never actually done this across multiple tiers before, so it's gonna be a little bit interesting. But again, with the help of the mini scraper and obviously my pre-prepared piping bag of buttercream, hopefully it will work. So I'm gonna start at the bottom. And with the piping bag, I can apply an even layer of buttercream. I'm gonna angle the piping bag slightly so I can get a nice thickness of buttercream coming out of the end and continue working my way up throughout this tier. Trying to keep the pressure as even as possible all the way up and then on top of this tier and then straight onto the second tier as well. Doing the exact same thing all the way up the tier. Then in between the top tier and the middle tier and then the top tier itself. And doing the top made me realize that I actually forgot to take out the skewer, but this should come out really easily now and the cake should stay nice and stable because it's cold. So I'm gonna go straight on with my palette knife on the very top of the cake and then smooth out like I usually would with my side scraper. So with an angled palette knife, making that top as flat as possible. And then the side scraper. So I'm working from the top tier downwards because as I use this side scraper, it's also going to start flattening out the top of the middle tier at the same time. Continue turning. And any build up of buttercream, I can just scrape into this bowl. And then continue on the middle tier. You see how quickly the scraper really cleans up that layer of buttercream. But we're far from finished because there's a lot of cleaning up to do on this cake. Right, the top two tiers are looking good so far. I'm just gonna tackle the bottom and then I'm gonna neaten up everything else. And the bottom tier is probably gonna be the easiest because you've got the resistance of a cake board underneath rather than another tier of cake. Keep turning until that buttercream smoothens out. And just to finish off that outer coating of buttercream, I'm doing these long strides across the cake so I've still got a few holes, especially around the top, but what I wanna do is start taking off some of this excess buttercream, because there is quite a build up, and specifically because it's such a small cake, I wanna make it as easy as possible. So rather than going all the way in, I'm actually gonna use the other edge of the palette knife. More alternative way of cleaning them, but I don't wanna run the risk of ruining other tiers of cake here. And then I'm just gonna fill up some of these holes as well, so putting a little bit extra buttercream here, and then almost starting again from the top. And this is where I wanna get it as close to finishing as possible to make that top nice and flat. 
So I'm actually not too worried if any cake is being exposed, especially around the edges, because like I said before, I'm actually gonna go on top with lots more piping details. What I want to do is make sure the surface of the cake is as clean as possible. But even then, always cover up your mistakes with more piping details anyway. So that's what I'm focusing on at the moment. So that is definitely starting to look more wedding cake-like. Now, as you can see, I've actually left these corners now rather than cleaning them off because I'm going to put this back in the freezer for it to set and then I'm going to cut them off to get nice sharp corners. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish off the decorations with all the pipe details and really make it sing wedding. So back into the freezer for about 10 to 15 minutes. So once again, after being in the freezer, the buttercream is nice and firm, so I can use a small knife and chop off those corners to make them nice and sharp. And now the next layer, I'm just gonna use the tip of the knife here, because I obviously don't wanna go into the cake. And then the great thing about the mini scraper is that I can go over where I've just cut and neaten it up. All right, so sharp corners, straight sides. Now it's time for all the piping details. So I have a whole tutorial on how to do a piped cake using my new piping guide. Again, details in the description box. But for this cake, because it's so small, I can't actually use the piping guide. So what I'm gonna do is actually briefly mark out using a knife into sort of eighths and quarters against each tier so I can see where to pipe. And then I'm just gonna go crazy with all the piping tips. So I've got a couple of star-shaped tips. I've got a small leaf tip, and I've also got a plain round tip to do some nice loops with. And I'm going to start with the loops and then do all the scrolls and swirls in the world. So for the loop, I'm gonna go in between the marks that I've just gone around the cake by going down, looping the buttercream, and bringing it back up. So now I'm gonna do some nice borders using the star tip. I'm gonna start off with nice big scrolls along the bottom, going up and down. And putting all of these scrolls together adds a really nice border to the bottom of the cake. Very traditional for a wedding cake too. And then I'm gonna use the leaf tip to make a sort of ruffle that will sit on top of the border I just piped. And now for a pipe border in between the tiers. Same as what I did below. And again, this really helps hide any seams or any cake that could be showing through. And I'm gonna go with the same leaf tip as before to make the ruffle border along the top of the first tier. Slight wave to make it look like a ribbon. Ours is already looking really pretty. Not finished yet, but also what I love is that I've kept to white and it's all gonna be one color, which makes it look really wedding-y. So I'm just gonna finish off the borders and then add on some final details. I'm just gonna use the leaf tip to create some nice little details along those scrolls I made. And then to finish off, I've got a few sprinkles that I'm gonna put where the scrolls and now leaves are. So I've got larger ones for the larger tier. They really add a royal touch. And then I've got some smaller ones for the smaller tier. Perfect. I love the sprinkles, they just add a little bit of elegance. And speaking of elegance, of course, this is my wedding cake after all. I'm going to finish off with my favorite edible glitter. Just enough to make it sparkle. Now, even though I've got glitter all over my hands, I am so happy with the way this cake turned out. It is so adorable. I'm gonna be making more mini cakes. I feel like I say that after every new technique I try out. But I really, really love this. I can't wait for Tal to see it as well. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun eating this. And after all, we have a wedding cake. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial and maybe even try out a mini cake yourself. Don't forget to head to my channel to see all of my recipes and tutorials, especially my piping cake tutorial, where I go through how to pipe in a little bit more detail. In the meantime, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and comment below with any other videos that you want to see. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you very soon.